Here Where we go. Okay. I'll find it. Hi, everybody. It's Gretchen. Welcome to the Just Gotta Laugh book club. I'm so glad that you are all here with me, especially tonight. We are going to have a fantastic conversation because not only have we read an outstanding book and I heard a bunch of um, I heard about heard from a bunch of you in advance of the book club who had finished the book already and were so excited to talk about it. And um, Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. I was trying to look at the comments, got ahead of myself. Oh. Um, and the other exciting thing today is that we have the author with us, Anne Garvin. Anne, you want to say hi? Hi, you guys. Nice to see you. <laughs> and it's coming to us um, from Madison. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Oh my God, that's what I've, I have a very funny story about that. So if we have time, I'll tell it. Okay. So I'm especially excited because this is the first time that Anne and I have actually chatted face to face. <laughs> Anne has been incredibly supportive of me ever since like, um, I think you blurbed my debut. Yeah, you blurbed Baumgartner's. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you definitely did because they were promoting it on the cover yeah. for a while. And um, she read my forthcoming book and I... I've been a fan of all, all three of your books and you have big news coming out and we'll talk about that. Yes, I do. Yes, we'll talk about that. So I just want to be, um, before we get too far into this, if you can see and hear me, could somebody um, shoot out some comments? Just let us know that you're here. Need to set my comment. Oh, yay. Okay, Heidi. Chavez, J. Oh, I'm I'm gonna butcher the name, so I'm just gonna say first names. Um, <laughs> my cousin Matt is here. Heidi is here. <laughs> Hi, Matt. <laughs> Matt's awesome. He's super loyal. He comes every week. Um, okay, so a couple of yay, we've got everybody tuning in. Thank you for Hi. letting me know. And you guys, if you've tuned in before, you know I like to make this as interactive as possible. And um, also. We hope you have brought your drinks. Cheers. Cheers. Um, I'm, I told Anne I'm wishing on the summer with a white wine spritzer tonight because Minnesota is not cooperating, but. I have a gin and tonic. It's my go-to. <laughs> I think good. Like I should have a cigarette when I say that red lipstick. I have my gin and tonic. It's my go-to, friend. Like, We've been, my husband and I have been binging Mad Men recently. And <laughs> so I'm totally, I'm totally, totally there with you. Okay. A little bit of bookkeeping. This is going to be a laugh filled hour. So I cannot wait for you guys to be here with us. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, we've got the next several weeks scheduled out. So next week we're going to be talking about Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And we're um, going to be joined with the Minnesota, we call her the book fairy of Minnesota. Um, uh, oh, that's so great, Pam. Pa <laughs> yes, everybody knows Pamela. Pamela Klingerhorn, she's going to be here. Um, and that is terrific. And then May 5th, so that's April 28th. May 5th, we are going to be reading um, Britt Marie Was Here, Frederick Bachman's book, which I actually am adoring right now. I'm, I'm in the middle of listening to it. I, I stress painted over the weekend, my kid's <laughs> bathroom and listened to Britt Marie. And she's so quirky that it made me feel a lot more sane. So if you get that one, an audiobook, I, I recommend it as like a, a mental health self-care tool. <laughs> um, and we're gonna be um, we're gonna be joined on that one with one of my favorite librarians uh, from New York, Carol Ann Tack. And she, she's been a huge support of me and she's actually great. She has her own podcast and everything. She's gonna be fun to chat with. Then on May 12th, we have Renee Rosen joining us for Park Avenue Summer. Have you read Park Avenue Summer, Anne? No. Oh, it's such terrific. Great, such a good writer. <laughs> she is. She God, that's great. No, I'll have to read it. She yeah. is so lucky. You're so lucky to get her. What a nice thing. I know. I know. I know. I've been kind of inserting myself in lots of friends, author friends' lives lately, but everybody is has been 
terribly generous and uh, it's been a great experience. So um, that is that you can see everything on the website or I mean on my Facebook page written by Gretchen where you already are right now. Um, so let's jump into it with Ms. Ann Garfin. Oh. And I was so, I mean, I know, first of all, the thing I, I need to say about you is that you are an author's author in that you are like the, if we call Pamela Klingerhorn the, the fairy book mother of Minnesota, you are like the fairy book mother author. I mean, like <laughs> Anne's ability to support other authors is just incredible. And it's really inspiring. I don't say it just as praise. It's really inspiring to see. And, you know, I hope to, I hope I'm passing some of that goodness along, but oh, you um, are. absolutely. You know, I find it, it was so funny. Like I was sitting here thinking, why do I, like, what is it that I, like I have trouble sometimes with social media and I, I realized that, and I even wrote a note to myself because I was thinking, this is why. And it's because I sort of think that I'm deeply uninteresting. <laughs> and and that, when I was like thinking about how I was gonna talk about my books and everything, I thought I gotta get other people in there because I am not that interesting and I am not gonna be able to sustain a conversation about me or Ann Garvin for any length of time. That's not to say that I don't like to teach and be at the center of attention. I do as long as we're not talking about me. And so I, um, I love, I love helping other people. And I was a nurse and I think there's some of that, you know? Yeah. Will you, I, I wanted to ask you about that. Will you tell everyone, I, I, it definitely shows up in your books, but will you tell everyone your background? Cause you started as a nurse, but that's not where you ended up even before you became an author. I know I have such a weird background. So yeah, I started out as a nurse. I was a terrible nurse because you, you know, when you are a nurse, you have to get the right meds to the right people like every time. You can't <laughs> mess it up. They're very picky about it. And they're, and they're not very nice when you screw it up and you give Bob's meds to Mike. And so after a while, I thought, you know what? This is not a good, this is not good for me. This is not a good fit. So I worked, but I did work as a nurse for almost 15 years and I put myself through grad school and I got a, a master's in exercise physiology because I was sort of fascinated with why people aren't moving more in the hospital and then exercise psychology because I really like how people tick. And so then I started teaching as a professor in um, health education because I'm sort of a health evangelist. Um, in many ways, although I, I put that mantle down because nobody is a friend to anybody who tells you what you're doing wrong with your health. Like, <laughs> Thank everybody you hates that person, yeah. And so uh, I'm way too much of a like kiss ass to be the person that's hated at the party because they're eating a salad. So, and, and then about in 2004, out of a just a fun idea, like I just thought this will be fun. I entered a contest for writing and, um, and I, it was for the Wisconsin Book Festival, and I, I came in second place, and uh, I, I, I thought, what? <laughs> and then I started to write more stories, and I kept sort of winning these little contests. And I thought, okay, I'm going to write a novel, which is, you know, really the dumbest thing you can do. <laughs> uh, after I writing, keep telling people it's a get rich quick scheme. If you yeah, want to get rich quick, write a novel. Sure. Yeah, I got fifty dollars today today to prove it for the dog year. Fifty bucks, people. So um, so then I started like I'm gonna write a I'm gonna write a book and that's gonna be my retirement plan. And well, while it is the plan for retirement, it is not my retirement plan. <laughs> no money in it, but I um. But that, yeah, so I have this very circuitous route and I started really late, which I think is kind of inspirational for people. It just means that you could just keep going, just keep going. It's your next chapter. That's how I look at it. I started really late too. I was- What was your well, career? Oh, I was, um, I was in corporate communication and change mm -hmm. management and major management consulting for close to 20 years. And then I realized, yeah, and then I realized I was really good and I got known for um, mimicking like executives' voices. Because whenever you get an email from an executive, you know, yeah. or like an announcement or a speech, they never write it, you know, yeah. they have someone write it for them. And 
Oh, and you it's, wrote those. It's far more authentic. Yeah. If you can, if you can get a hold of their style and yeah. So then after I left the corporate world and was completely done with it, I remember coming off my last job interview and saying to my husband, I just got off a job interview and everything they told me made me want to throw up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have any more goals in this career because yeah. I could see exactly what was coming down the pike. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I'm done. Yep. Yeah. But so then I was a ghostwriter for quite a long time before, oh. doing the before switching over to the novel thing. Yeah. That's I mean, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. And I, 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 it was not a hard switch over. It was like gradually, gradually, gradually. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. You can't. Yeah. It, it's great. I, I, I just said the other day, I'm like, God, writing a book is hard. Ah. <laughs> I know it's, it's so the worst. Hard. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things, though, I think that always shows up in your books and particularly this one of course is your medical background and I you always have these fantastic opening scenes too because oh. not only this one where we get Newton in the chair and he is a prick you <laughs> she calls him a prick but he I mean he is and as the reader you're just you know she should not be doing what she's doing but you're just right. cheering her on going yeah let him have it um, but don't you, isn't, um, I can't, is it the dog year where the doctor who's your main character has like a theft problem? Yes. She shoplifts. Yeah. yeah. She's a, she's a surgeon and she shops, lifts hospital supplies and then brings them home in the box full and then locks them in her bedroom behind a padlock. Yeah. Because right. she. I mean, it's a sad reason. She lost her husband and her child in utero. And she thinks that if she would have had the right supplies, she could have saved them in their time of need. But um, but now as a coping mechanism, she steals hospital supplies and brings them home. So it's sad, but it's also completely silly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. You know, I try to get away from um, from the medical aspect of things, but I can't help myself. I, I don't think, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know that you should, because there are so few writers who can actually write to that perspective accurately and believably, you know, yeah. and I, I, we were talking a little bit um, for everybody who's watching right now, we were talking, Anne and I were talking a little bit off camera first, and she was talking about how her books are funny and sad. And I love, I can, it might not be as far as gallows humor, but that's one of the things I love about your books is that. Oh, they are. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, I grew up in a family, thankfully, that was like, if you can't laugh about tragedy, you're not going to get through it. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that my background as a nurse, there's a couple of things about nurses. Like, like I will never forget. There are times when I was working as a nurse where it, you were on the middle of a midnight shift and somebody does something and it's so awful and so funny at the same time that you think to yourself, if anybody knew this, they would put you in a home somewhere. But yeah. it also gets at the very basic nature of who we are, because we are never more ourselves than we are vulnerable and in pain and in the hospital. No bit of psychology goes undiscovered when you are vulnerable in the hospital. Yeah, and that's so, gotta be true. Yeah, it's kind of an easy way for me to get into the characters a little bit if if I use some of that, you know, medical background to sort of dive into that piece. Yeah. Like, so. Heidi, Heidi has a comment for you too. She says she, um, quirky characters seem so real and she loves that in your books. Oh God. You know what? I always say, I love a good weirdo. Like <laughs> I love a good weirdo. Like some of my friends will be like, why do you hang around with that person? And the answer is always, I love a good weirdo. <laughs> Like they're just my favorite people, you know, like people that memorize zip codes or people that like just have these unusual things about them. I cannot get enough of that. I love that. And I, I often, very often my kids will be like, we'll be sitting in a restaurant and my kids will be like, mom, you're staring again. And I'll be like, yes, I am. And I'm thinking all these, cause they just, there's something about the idiosyncrasies of people in general that I can't, I want to follow that string on the sweater back and figure out who they are and where they got and how they got so weird. I think we're all weird. 
I have this book percolating in my head that has a jazz, um, a cabaret singer, a jazz and cabaret singer as the main character. And yeah. so my husband and I were out um, at a supper club, jazz club one night, and I had my notebook. I was a writer and I was taking notes. And this, it, it, you know, at the jazz clubs, you get a shared table. So we didn't know the people next to us, but we ended after a couple drinks, they were our best friends. But yeah. <laughs> she she was like I watched you the whole concert and I was kind of wondering if like you were like um a psychiatrist or if you were like a spy or something I could or were you writing a story like a newspaper story on there or something I was like no I'm a novelist it's all the same we yeah. spy on everybody as as our part of our daily lives yeah yes and if I date you god are you in trouble <laughs> you better treat me well because it's all coming out and i might just change the first letter of your name you know whatever it is phil instead of bill like i that god, god bless you we have a question i wanted to ask you and everybody if you have questions for ann go ahead and start shooting them into the comments because she and i could probably just take off for the rest of the hour and chit chat and i, I don't want to do that to you but um my one of the questions i really wanted to ask you about is that quote from Pete where he looks at her and he says when he looks at Tig and he says I'm just really not that excited about you anymore I was like that it felt too real I was like did that come did you have a personal experience with that did somebody who you know was that yeah. ever really said oh yeah somebody said that to me Please don't. <gasps> Such a hard thing to hear. Yes. Yes. That. Yes. I was actually, um, it was after my, and this is the funniest thing because here I'm going on Facebook, which is like, you know, I'm going to tell you a little, little thing. But yeah. Um, yeah, after my divorce, it was quite a bit after my divorce. I dipped my toe into dating again and I, I dated this man who I really liked. And, um, and, he said to me, we were, I said, what is up? Because I feel like you're a little bit hot and cold and I can't really tell where you're at. And he said, you know, I'm just not that excited about you. Oh. And I was like, look, nobody wants to hear that from their mailman, let alone you. Like what? And he said, but I don't really think it's something to worry about. I'm like, maybe not for you, but it's, it's a big worry for me. Like, excited about like if they're not excited about me what are you like oh yeah that Ann Garvin Meh. like what so I um I said well we're done then because I really don't yeah. have somebody that isn't excited about me and I I said to him I remember saying when I left um I said you like me more than you realize I'm just telling you right now and uh you I'm leaving and um, I had a lot of like uh, a lot of satisfaction after that because he was very sorry that it ended, and I heard that from his daughters and him on several occasions. But it already moved on, and um, but I I that was such a um, that that really hurt. And um, when and I don't always use things from my life in my books it's in fact kind of rare and like I will never forget the day when this I was on television and the woman who was interviewing me for the dog year for um was we were in Milwaukee and she said to me so shoplifting yeah that's it so do you are you um oh, are you, are no you yeah I was like no it's fiction like <laughs> Meaning it's not true. So, um, and, and I, I remember Elizabeth Berg, the author, she said one time, she said, people think they always know what's true in my books and who the people are, and they're always wrong. And um, that is true, that very rarely are people right. But I'm not that excited about you actually it did come from my own life. And it was such a hard, it was a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. Yeah, that one just it felt so real. I just had to ask you about it. That one was real. I must Cousin say. Matthew has a few choice words to say about oh, that guy. Right. Yes, there. I'll, I'll leave him in the comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, no. He says, "What a dick." You know, we all agree. Right. Well, yeah. I I think he was trying to be. Honestly, I think he was a little clueless, and that. Left him, I don't know. Like I don't think he really realized what he was saying. 
I think he yeah. was trying to say, I'm, I think actually he was trying to say I'm a little bit depressed, but, um, oh. and, but it came out, you know, I'm not excited about you, which was absolutely the death knell for dating Ann Garvin. Like, <laughs> if you're, like I am a Leo. If you tell a Leo you're not very excited about him, you're dead to me. <laughs> you maybe can tell that to a Capricorn, but you cannot say it to a Leo. <laughs> Oh, that is so funny. Hey, I, I want to pass on, you're getting some hellos on here. We've got Lenore. Um, oh, Lenore. Who's... Hi. Oh, she's my heart. <laughs> she's here. She says, hi. Um, Bethany's here. She says, cheers. That's my BFF. Oh. Um, Jody's here. <clears throat> she says, hi. <laughs> Cousin Matthew. And you know who else is here is Laura Breuer who um she took one of your classes she was in a writer's group with me yes yeah yes. Laura, Hi, is Laura. Here. yeah oh, Laura's nice. here yeah Vicky. I for some reason Facebook is making me sign in which I don't that's like asking me to figure out my password from <laughs> seventh grade I can never remember what that is so I can't yeah. see any of the comments but thank that's you my, that's my job Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm going to turn it over if people have questions about the book, definitely talk a little bit. Um, talk a, one of the other things are, I loved about this book in particular, especially being a mother is that it talks about mother daughter relationships on so many different levels, because there's the daughter of mother relationship. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? And there's the, there's the daughter as self. I mean, Tig's whole journey is trying to figure out who she is over the course of this book. And then there's the mother as self too, that I resonated with throughout the whole book. I know that Tig is not a mother, but you know, you have to figure out who you are, I think, in order to be. Well, a- yeah, and what happens when you realize your mother is a person? Yes. It's not just a caricature of my mother loved me, she took care of me, blah, blah, blah. But what is it when you find out, oh my God, she she loved my dad, but she loved somebody else maybe a little bit too. And, yeah. and then she's a product of her year, her era. Yes. And what yeah. happens when we take a woman who was not a fully invested in her era Um, but could not leave her era per se emotionally she couldn't like she was a veterinarian back when women were not necessarily veterinarians so that gives you an idea that she was a different kind of woman yeah what happens when we recognize that our our moms you know like I remember when I was young and I I remember saying to my friends like my mom was a nurse um my my mom met my dad but I didn't have much else to go on. Like I never had to deal with, well, I never had to deal with divorce or like multiple dating situations with my mother where I've had to recognize that she was a being and maybe even a sexual being. And yeah. that, oh, God forbid, yeah. <laughs> God forbid, like we don't even want to think about that, but just think if we did start thinking about all people as sexual beings and gave and, and was able to like allow people humanity. Yeah. And then what do we do with that yeah. mind blowing thing? And then we have, you know, Tig who is making different decisions, much more careful decisions. And then Wendy who's wildly making all kinds of crazy decisions that we don't necessarily agree with. But then when you find out what her reasoning is, you can almost not agree with her. You can almost yeah. not, not agree with her, I guess I should say. So yeah, I, I, I really wanted to look, I don't have a sister. Um, I have two daughters who are very close sisters and have a relationship far outside of my realm. Like we have a relationship, but they have a different relationship. And, yeah. um, and I always wanted a sister um, and I was close to my mother. And then my mother did get Alzheimer's. Um, Okay. And I wrote, it's interesting though, because I wrote this book really before my mother got as sick as she did with Alzheimer's because she really ended up dying of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I really wanted to explore in this um, fairness on a very deep level. Oh, like, yeah. Right? Like what, and she becomes the arbiter of, 
fairness for the world. Like she's going to take phone calls and then decide what is fair and what is not. And then once you get into that idea of like being the person that calls foul on something, then you also become the person that has to understand all the intricacies of being human. Um, and we're not very good at that. No. Uh -uh. So I, I was just sort of fascinated at the funny and sad nature of that experience. Like I love looking at why that's so hilarious and then also why that's so sad. When, I, yeah. You know, most of our human impulses are based in sort of, you know, trying to fill a hole that doesn't necessarily get filled very easily. And so that can be kind of sad, but it's also sort of hilarious in my mind. Like I can't really look at anything and not think it's funny. I, and I'm annoying that way. Like my, I have, Jackie Michard is my good friend and she bought me a t-shirt once that said, not everything is funny, Anne. <laughs> spending a week with me I remember she said it to me too she's like not everything is funny and I'm like really <laughs> you sure because I'm not sure, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I would I would agree with that either I might be I might be oh I might be a uh good candidate for that t-shirt too I don't know yeah well you think everything is funny <laughs> you know I think we both think everything's funny I do yeah, at like, some level I mean, eventually you got to find some minute. Yeah. I mean, humanity is embarrassing and embarrassing is funny. Yes. It so, is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the times that I've laughed the hardest are the times when I'm the most embarrassed. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's so, the only way to deal with embarrassment. Right. And so if you're embarrassed then something human happened. Yeah. And so that's why I sort of can't I, I can't not think of everything as funny. I mean, I wonder, that's the, I wonder if that's the dividing line between, I happen to love cringe humor if I can relate to the characters. My husband hates it. He cannot stand cringe humor, but I can laugh at the embarrassing, but he relates too much to it. I, well, I, that is probably the thing that he really, he sees himself doing it. And he just thinks I would rather die. Like <laughs> I would just die. Thank goodness he's a good sport. Okay, yeah. I have to ask you too about speaking of the sisters, the names. I always love the names in your books. You are a very creative name chooser. Like um, Newman. Okay, did you name him after the Seinfeld character? No, I didn't. But I kept thinking, what is the least sexy, most agreeable <laughs> man name? And I thought Newman is a pretty bad one. Like I does Newman Harmeyer just seem like the worst name for a man. It's so, very potato-ish. It, it's so potato-y. <laughs> Absolutely potato-y. And it I really says, wanted you to not like him in the beginning. So Newman is a good name for that. Before I move on, Bethany says, if you are embarrassed and something human happened. I don't know who that's from. She started the citation. It's Gur somebody. Oh, is it somebody? Is it somebody say that? Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's a quote. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> she meant to say, great quote. She oh. quoted you. She oh, quoted good you. for me. Yeah. That's sad and good read. She just hit, she hit return before it finished. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, Newman, awesome name. But what was the inspiration between behind Wendy and um, Tiger Lily? You know, um, I, when I was writing that, I was thinking about the childhood of um, Neverland and how these girls were going to lose their childhood in the course of this story. Oh. They were going to learn, um, you know, probably a life that their mother had that they never, ever thought of and that they were going to have to embrace something new that they never thought they would have to embrace. And that would be sort of adulthood. And so um, those names just came to me in a flash. Like I can't even say that I worked hard at those names, but all of a sudden Tig came to me. Now I will say this, um, the, my sister-in-law has a name and her name is Kathleen, but they called her Twink, <laughs> always, her whole life Twink. And, um, and I- T-W-I-N-K or T-W-I-G? T-W-I-N-K, twink. 
<laughs> and it's because the neighbor lady came and saw her as a baby and said her eyes sure twinkled. Mm. And um, so she was oh, twinkling. Yeah. So I, I think I liked the idea of the origination of a name coming from um, something that somebody says about even, you know, when you were just a baby, um, like a nurse, a baby yeah. nurse or something like that. Yeah. And um, often I will, it's funny, a name of a character will sort of come to me and it's, um, it just shows up and I just use it. Um, and it isn't, it isn't always inspirational, but um, I don't know about you, but I try to match the character with that personality of that name. I do too. Uh, yeah, I yeah. do. And then, but I, I don't always want to make a thing about it. So I don't know. Names are tough. Don't you think names are hard? Yeah, I have this tendency, like with my first book, I got the copy edits back <clears throat> and, I, or no, it was the, um, it wasn't the copy edits. It's where they the fact checking or whatever, you know, where they go through and they had like, apparently for all the minor characters, you know, the people who just like walk in scene and out, but you have to name them. Apparently I use the same names, like 12 for like 12 different characters in the same book. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was, that was a lesson I had to learn. So now That's I'm funny. But they do have to fit, but yeah, I have a tendency to my main characters. I tend to know the names. Like I can't yeah. write them yeah, until I know the name. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And then they just come to me as if they've already been written somewhere in the universe. Yes. Yeah. But then the supporting characters and, and the, and you know, the people who kind of like make things happen behind the scenes, I have to think about those. And I often change them several times. How about oh, you? Oh, I do too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. That's the weird part about book writing. It's part magic, part bookkeeping. It is. <laughs> it it is. Yeah. Oh, and thank heavens for all the people on the editorial team. I'm like, bow down to them. Down to them. Yeah, because yeah. they really keep me straight on things. Yeah. Me too. Um, oh, and timelines. I'm terrible with timelines. How about you? Yeah, it's funny you should say that because I, let me see, where is it? Oh, it's underneath the computer so that I don't look old and have the wrong tilt to my computer. But like, I have a timeline right here for the book I'm working on right now. Oh, that's for some reason I always do it on an envelope or something like this. And yeah, I have to if I don't write the timeline down. But sometimes that timeline doesn't get written until after the book is written, and then I have to fit the timeline in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or you change something in the plot, and then it throws off all your yeah your dates. So we're coming to the end of our time, but I love to ask fellow authors this question because it fascinates me as a reader and a writer both. And that yeah. is, what is it like in your head when you're writing? Like, what do you hear? Oh my gosh, what a good question. Um, I hear my characters as if I'm watching them in a movie. Oh. And then I write down what they're saying as they're saying it, not after. So it's like I am... So uh, my books are very cinematic, um, yeah. very, they follow a very visual line. Um, people have told me that before, and I do think it's because I've watched so many movies. I'm such a movie watcher. Um, and so I, um, I'm so deeply in the moment when I'm writing that after I leave and I go back and I read it again, I think I do not remember writing that. I have no memory of writing that stuff, but I re I can visualize the scene that I wrote it, but I don't remember the dialogue. And I'm so grateful that I've written it down because I would never remember it again. Um, yeah. So I think that's the best description that I can give you of it. It's a little bit like, it's a little Rain Manny um, and a little, little spooky, frankly. So it and, sounds like you're experiencing it. You are not the character, but you are experiencing. I am experiencing it when I'm writing it down. And sometimes, like I rarely, um, sometimes I will cry um, or laugh, um, but mostly I am deeply entrenched in it. And then I walk away from it and I read it again. And, I'm, and, and I will sometimes be like, well, that's garbage. 
or <laughs> oh that was kind of a good line and then I worry that I stole it from somewhere because I don't remember writing it like I think you couldn't have written that I have such low self-esteem <laughs> that was too good to come out of my head it goes along with that same belief system that I'm an enormously uninteresting person like I think it's a miracle I get anything down on paper a freaking miracle <laughs> oh, oh and for, oh, God. Oh, she's back okay good all right I want to give you you froze for a brief second but you're back okay I want to give you a minute um to talk about what you have coming next and then tell everyone where we can find you because I have to say Anne has an awesome in particular you're so funny on Twitter I love following you on Twitter but I love your pictures on Instagram because not only is Peanut the cutest dog in the whole world, but your house is so cute. And Anne, oh. Anne posts pictures of her house and I'm always inspired, you know, and I'm in the kitchen, like when I'm looking at it and I'm looking at all my counters of all the dishes that are like sitting out <laughs> stuff or like, or the, like the balance that I have like halfway done and just haven't ever <laughs> force myself to finish well you know I moved and so I moved into this little house about a year and a half ago so it's really nice when you move into a new place because you can kind of and it was somebody had flipped it before I got in here and so it was pretty clean and pretty easy and I got rid of a lot of stuff and moved in a lot of you know just moved it all in so it's been really fun to do that I have to say it's like having your own little dollhouse because it's tiny and and it's all mine, you know, so it can be whatever I want it to be. So I yeah. do love that. And if you want to find me, it's Ann Garvin with an underscore. That's the, the easiest way. Yeah. yeah. Ann Garvin. And that's my Twitter um, thing too, Ann Garvin with a little underscore. Um, my next book is a road trip book. It's about um, two women. Uh, well, actually, it's about three best friends from um, college who fell apart in their friendship and you don't know why they did but they have to come back together and go and get their their central best friend's dog who is across country in California because she's dying of cancer and she needs that dog to help her yeah um, and so the two women have to go across country and save this diabetic great Pyrenees dog and the two women hate each other and um, one of them has a sleep disorder and the other one can't stand anything medical and the dog has diabetes. So they, I, I pitched it as Salmon and Louise meets Little Miss Sunshine. Um, and uh, there is a major B-list um, celebrity stuck in the center of the book to keep everybody on their toes. And so I, um, it's been... It was a riot to, to write. Um, and uh, I just got my editing letter yesterday. So I'm working my way through the edits right now. So it won't come out for a year. April 20, what year are we? <laughs> April right, 21. No. 21, mm -hmm. April 21. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Do you have an idea for a title yet? It's called, um, I thought you said this would work. Oh, love it. Yeah, so I, I um, I'm excited about that book. I, I am excited about that. I think it'll be really a lot of fun. Um, I hope that readers will see what it's like um, to travel with somebody that you're not that crazy about, but also who you really want to have as your best friend again, because this yeah. woman really wants her as a best friend, but she did something egregious and she doesn't know what it is. And she's so conflict avoided. She can't face it. And yeah. so, so whenever she can't face it, she falls asleep because she's got an eating, she's got the sleep disorder that it's not like the fainting sheep where a loud noise happens and they fall over. But every time something super duper stressful comes, her lights start to slowly fade and she has to start to go to sleep. So it's very hard when you're driving thousands and thousands of miles across country and you, you get stressed immediately and you have to pull over, you know, so. It's a, it's a ridiculous, it's, it's my favorite kind of story, completely oh, ridiculous. I cannot yeah. wait to read it. Put me on the ARC list, please. Oh, well, I'll probably ask you to blurb it, you know. <laughs> You'll get it early. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody has any final questions for Anne or anything you want to say, Heidi said um, in 
response to our earlier conversation, she said she heard some, she has heard some songwriters say that they write songs late and then later don't remember writing them. I totally get that. I absolutely get that. There yeah. is, you know, I, I, um, Liz Gilbert has that thing where she talks about, you know, the magic idea and the magic of creativity. And a lot of it is kind of woo woo for me, but then I'll do something that I don't remember and I'll think, well, you've got to embrace the woo woo a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it, creativity is a magical process, I think. It is. I, I, I can't define it myself, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Anne, thank you so much. This was such a treat. So much fun. So fun and so good to meet you finally. I know you do. You I, can, I live in your head, but I haven't met you yet. So it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> well, we shall toast over gin and tonic sometime either here or in Madison. I will be coming to Minneapolis. So we'll get together there. Good. And thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Leave your comments and like the page. And <clears throat> um, don't forget, if you want to chat about the books in advance, I did start the Just Gotta Laugh discussion group on the website. Cousin Matthew says he had a great time. Oh, we love it. And Cousin you know, Matthew. if you reach out to me, I'll always answer you on Facebook. So just find me and ask me questions. I'm always around. Oh, and the spare room reads says, thank you. So um, Matt says, cousin Matthew says, cheers. Good night, everybody. Have a Good great night. time and be on the lookout one year until Anne's next book. But go back oh, and yeah. read her others. They're really great. Yeah, thank you. It's the dog year and what's- um, It's called, uh, there's on Maggie's watch, the dog year. And I like you just fine when you're not around. That's right. That's right. Thanks, yep. Anne. All right. Night, everybody. Bye.